This episode is sponsored by Honey Badger. In addition to Honey Badger's great error monitoring service, they also have an uptime monitoring for web developers. And Honey Badger has recently shipped an update that allows for public status pages that can help communicate outages to your customers. In addition to your uptime monitoring, Honey Badger now monitors your SSL certificates. And Honey Badger now has actions which will allow you to do bulk updates to all your errors, or you can set defaults for incoming errors. So I don't usually do this, but I figured that this is such an interesting pull request that I wanted to have a look at it. And it is around the Generates Token 4. So in Rails applications, we already had the Has Secure Password, and that's been around for a number of years. And that allows us to securely store any kind of password on our database as a digest. We also have the Secure Token, which will allow us to generate some kind of token and persist that to the database. But the Generates Token 4 is a little bit different and it's going to make a big difference in how we approach the authentication in a Rails application once Rails 7.1 comes out. And one reason why I don't like covering this kind of stuff right away is because it is subject to change. As we get closer to the release date when this is going to be a public release, the API could have changed, and then it would just be a bit confusing. So I'll be keeping a close eye on this one because I do have some ideas for it. And it's one that I think is going to be very helpful as we approach authentication solutions in the more modern Rails applications. Because I think that with Devise and Sorcery, both are great authentication solutions in Rails applications. However, Devise adds way too much functionality that most of the applications that create never need. And Sorcery is a bit too simple that leaves a lot to be desired around the views and handling the authentication. And so I think with the combination of the has secure password, the secure tokens, and the generates tokens for, we're going to be able to create a very simple authentication solution in our Rails application. So in this episode, I want to dive into what this generates token for is and how we would use it within our application. And again, this will be once Rails 7.1 is released or whatever version is after 7.0.4 that would include this pull request. To watch this full episode and more videos, visit driftandruby.com and subscribe to the Pro Membership.